Англия – страна с богатейшей историей и традицией. Туманный Альбион подарил миру плеяду великих писателей, ярчайшую рок-культуру и английскую болезнь. Именно так с легкой руки журналистов стали называть всплески насилия на стадионах и вокруг них. Англия подарила миру футбол, а вместе с ним и то явление, которое принято называть около футболом. Миллоу, Лидс Юнайтед, Вест Хэм Юнайтед, Кардиф Сити, Бирмингем Сити – эти клубы известны всему миру вовсе не с Своими победами и титулами, а армиями преданных поклонников, колесящих повсюду за своей командой и готовых вразумить любого сомневающихся в величии их клуба или силе их самих. Именно о поклонниках Бирмингем Сити, Зулу Вориас, немногих, кто осмеливался бросать вызов ведущим движам страны, о славной истории и настоящем положении вещей пойдет наше нынешнее повествование. Birmingham as a city uh, is divided mainly into two parts. You've got um, Aston Villa, which are based in the, the north of the city. You know, most of their supporters will come from either North Birmingham or West Birmingham. Uh, but, you know, our stadium, which is located sort of southeast of the city centre, uh, traditionally, uh, but most Birmingham supporters will come from either the south or the east of the city. There are, you know, some occasions where, you know, our lads live north of the city and, and vice versa. However, Uh, where our firms traditionally base ourselves is in pubs, um, you know, around Villa have got their area, you know, near to Aston and then in the north of the city centre, whereas we will drink normally, you know, in around our sort of um, near close to the stadium and around the Digbeth area in between the city and, uh, and the stadium. Right, uh, this is St Andrews, um, home of Birmingham City Football Club, as you can see. Um, this is what we call uh, the railway end. Um, it's uh, for home supporters and away supporters. Um, a far end reserve for the away supporters anyway. Zulu Warriors – визитная карточка клуба Birmingham City. Какова же история этой группировки? Yeah, there was um, violence down in Birmingham City from uh, back in the 70s really. Uh, but it didn't really come until about 1982 when Birmingham City played uh, Manchester City away uh, when the Zulu name first came about. Um, there was battles up and down the streets um, and Man City, because of the large black contingent of um, followers that Birmingham City had at the time, uh, the Man City fans were singing over, shouting over Zulu and all that, calling them Zulus, obviously for being black people and that. And um, obviously the Birmingham City lads laughed and joked about it and then started shouting, yeah, yeah, Zulus, we're the Zulus. And that's how the name really come about really. And it's still going this, to this day, 2015. Um, still very active at the moment, anyway. Not so much the old lads, um, obviously, because people have got families and settled down with good jobs and that. But we still have a good young firm at the moment. There's been little breakaway groups, like, you know, we've had the junior business boys from back in the 80s uh, yeah, as well. The, you know, the little Zulu juniors. Um, and you've got Zulu youth as well. So we've got little, little breakaway firms that have come together over the years. But um, Birmingham City, the Zulus, are still very active at the moment. Um, obviously, because of... Um, You know, a lot of banning orders and the police, uh, policing of uh, the games and stuff. Um, not so much happens, but when it does happen, um, we can still pull a good firm together. We're still pretty good, really, anyway. How do lads become involved with a firm? Well, I, I think it, it is uh, most of the time down to the actual individual. You know, it's quite a personal thing, really. However, I do think most guys get involved with a firm as following football um, from a young age, you know, being taken to the matches either by their parents or with their mates, you know, from school. And then slowly they start to, you know, feel, feel an affinity for Birmingham City, you know, they, they feel an attachment to the club and they want to then try, try and, you know, fight for their club, for their city, uh, for their friends, you know. And you kind of, you know, people, people feel a lot of passion at football. And I think that's where a lot of it comes from, you know, people, people will feel this passion and then they'll suddenly start, Do you know what? I want to start fighting the away firms. I don't want people coming to my city and, you know, and taking the piss out of me and my friends. And I think basically that's, that's the kind of way people, you know, end up getting involved. You know, they might meet someone who's involved with a the firm. They'll go down with them. Uh, they'll, you know, or they'll slowly get involved by just going to matches and being recognised as a good fighter. Nationalities and social class. Well, Zulu's, uh, as most people know, is a multi-ethnic firm, you know, Bir Birmingham as a city. 
uh, has a lots, lots of different uh, ethnicities and social classes in general. So to be honest, our firm is made up, yeah, different ethnicities, different nationalities, uh, to be honest, different social classes as well really. It's predominantly still working class subculture uh, for English football hooliganism. But there are lads within our firm, you know, that have done well for themselves, that have their own businesses, uh, you know, and have quite a bit of money. So I think, to be honest, we've got all, this is what one thing that's made our firm good over the years. Uh, we, have, we, we accept anyone from all walks of life, you know, as long as you're Birmingham City, as long as you're willing to fight for your club, you know, you, you're welcome to come with us. We, we're, not, we're not nationalistic in any way. We don't exclude anyone, you know, from being uh, any, any different social background. As long as you're blues, as long as you're willing to fight, you, you, you're welcome at Birmingham City. Yeah, uh, here at Birmingham City, uh, what it is, we don't have uh, actually, like, we, like they do in Europe, many different groups in one firm. Uh, with Birmingham, right, we, we all come under the one banner, the Zulus, right? We're all one firm at the end of the day. Исторические болельщики Сити борются за пальму первенства в городе со своими земляками, поддерживающими Астон Виллу. Их отношения далеки от идеальных. Well, it's very simple. Birmingham City is a very small club. Uh, we're not in Europe very often, therefore we don't really have any rivals outside of England. Uh, so if I'm going to answer who's our main rivals coming from the continent, I'd have to just say Aston Villa. We've only got one rival, it'll always be Aston Villa. That's it. Simple. Yeah, our rivalry with Aston Villa, um, it's been going on for about 30 years. It's maybe, maybe longer than that really, as long as I can remember. Well, me personally, I've been active down the blues since I was about 13 years old. I've been going down the blues all my life. Uh, I was born into a Birmingham family. I think that's how it starts a lot in this city. You're either born one side, you're either support the same team as your family, and you're either Blues or you're either Villa. I was born into a Blues household. Started going down the, uh, with my dad uh, when I was a young age. Slowly graduated onto going down with friends. Once you start going down with friends, you start getting involved uh, in trouble sometimes. Yeah, I first became involved with the Zulus uh, around about 1985. Uh, first like going down to the football with a few friends from school who were Birmingham City supporters. Uh, I'd never been to the Birmingham City games before. So uh, 1985, that's when I first started going down. Uh, because of the, being, you know, the, the violence in, this, in, in England at the time, right, every game that I'd actually went to, there was football violence. Right? And I really got involved with it. Like, you know, I'd just seen riots and stuff. And to me, I was just amazed by it. So I just started going down to football for a few years after that. Английская околофутбольная сцена всегда была законодательница моды и примером для подражания для всего остального околофутбольного мира. Как же обстоят дела сейчас на внутренней арене Англии? Yeah, the English scene today, right? Um, it is pretty quiet at times due to like obviously CCTV, uh, the police presence at football matches, uh, banning orders. You know, it is on a decline compared to the 1980s and the 1990s. But there's a lot of young firms coming down now throughout England and uh, as though you don't hear much about the violence that goes on, right? If you know people from over the country, from different football teams, you always hear about incidents going on, right? So it is still very active over here which, to the young firms. Although you don't hear much about it, like on the news and stuff, and you don't, you don't see nothing happening in football grounds or anything like that, but it's still a big thing over here and, you know, there is a lot of young firms out there throughout the country who are very, very active on a weekly basis. So I'd say, yeah, the scene is still very good over here, although you don't hear much about it anymore. The role of pubs in the English football scene, well, to be honest, yeah, as far as, far as since I've been active anyway, pubs have played a very important part in football disorder. I don't think alcohol does, you know. I think people will fight whether they've had a drink or not, you know. Uh, however, p pubs are used mainly for meeting in, you know, people people will know what pubs our firm uses, you know, we will know what f uh, pubs other firms use. Uh, so it's, it's a very big part of English football violence is, you know, trying to find out where, where the away firm's pub is or if we're at home, you know, our pubs, you know, and, and doing, battle, doing battle around them. However, it, it can also be, I think, the downfall sometimes, you know, because the police start to know what pubs we use and it's very easy for the police to drive around from pub to pub checking to see if we're there on a match day. So sometimes when we have actually succeeded in violence, we've met up at places that aren't pubs, you know, we've met up in car parks or we'll meet up somewhere out the way uh, and this sort of can occur. However, the, the, the place of the pub is still very important in the English scene. The police, well, the police's role on uh, hooliganism in England at the moment is basically uh, quite strong, you know. The, 
the young lads nowadays, people who are still active at the moment, have to really try very hard uh, to avoid the police in any situation. We've always had this kind of, it's kind of a game with the police where, you know, through, on a match day, from the very get-go, as soon as you're meeting up, you're trying to avoid the police all the time. You know, they, 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 to be honest, they're very, they are very good now uh, at trying to stop disorder in England. There's virtually no trouble in the stadium anymore. Uh, but, however, there is still disorder outside the stadium. Now, the police have a very strong role in stopping this, but if, if you are organised and you get together early and you keep out of the way of any CCTV presence or any sort of, uh, don't draw attention to yourself in any way, there is still possibilities to meet up and fight, you know, with disorder in England. The police try very hard uh, to ban, as soon as they realise young lads are coming on the scene, They'll try and get they'll try and get evidence whatever evidence they can against people uh, and give them a civil ban in court which to be honest they, it's one of the only countries i think where they do they can actually ban you from just being associated with hooligans and basically if they they don't have to have evidence that you've committed an actual crime uh, they can ban you for just uh, for, for just being a, you know if they think that you're going to be coming involved in disorder and they have evidence that you're running about with the firm uh, they'll do what they can to ban all the young lads coming through so i think the the role of the police now on hooliganism in England is, uh, yeah, they, they, you know, they're, they're very good at doing what they do, but at the same time, sometimes we can be good as well. And, you know, the, if, if, basically, the, the more clever you are and the more organised you are, the less the police can stop you. If you get caught fighting at the footy uh, in England, you're very likely to receive um, a football banning order along with other sentences. Um, they have minimum three-year order uh, sometimes it's known to be given six if you're arrested for a specific incident of fighting. Some lads um, who have actually been convicted of serious or high profile disorder have even got 10 year orders in the past. What you're seeing here is the match day exclusion zone that's given to Birmingham City lads that serve banning orders. Um, the highlighted area on the map is the area of the city that you're not allowed to go uh, very often three hours before the match or up to six hours after the match although sometimes this can vary depending on the seriousness of your offence. Национальная сборная не так часто призывает под свои знамена. Какое место занимает она в повседневной жизни английского околофутбольщика? И как налажен контакт с руководством любимого клуба? Right, uh, yes, I, I used to follow the national team back in the 90s. Uh, but um, over the years, like, uh, we got in trouble with the police a few times, uh, we got a banning order and stuff. Uh, so basically, I just lost interest in it. Um, what, I, what I didn't really like about the following England at the time is English football firms fighting against each other all the time when they should have been sticking together. And that really pissed me off, that did, really. Um, but um, to me, I, as much as I used, I love English, England as a football team, right, uh, uh, my club comes first, which is Birmingham City. Yeah, uh, the difference is in England uh, to different parts of Europe is that uh, us supporters over in England don't have much of a relationship with, as, as being a hooligan, with the club as, as we do with the supporters. I mean, the players as such. Английская болезнь давно поразила весь континент. Как относятся наши герои к европейской околофутбольной сцене? Who do I respect in Europe? Uh, well, the English, I'd still say ourselves, you know, on our day, I still believe that a good English firm, when the police don't stop us, you know, when we're all together, that we can compete with anyone in Europe. I still believe this to this day. Uh, the Russians, obviously, you've got, to, you've got to respect the Russians for what they do. I mentioned before, I really like the Russian style fair fights. You know, I think you guys have got a really organised, strong firm and a good way to test young fighters, you know, that come into the firm. Uh, the Poles, quite similar. I think the Polish style of the violence is, is, is very good as well. Uh, and also Balkans, you know, completely different kind of style, but you've got to take your hat off to the big, the big firms in the Balkans, you know, Red Star, Partizan, Dinamo, Hajduk, uh, you know, obviously Croatians have got a lot of police repression as well, but they've still got a great, great active firm. To be honest, they're the main country I respect, but Central European firms, Germany, uh, Austrian scene, I think is very good. And also uh, the Swiss, believe it or not, are coming out with a really good, uh, strong ultra and hooligan scene at the moment. So yeah, quite good times for uh, Central Europe. Особого отзыва удостоился русский около футбол. Каков он в глазах англичан? What do we think about Russian hooligans? Well, to be honest, yeah, you, coming from uh, a nation that probably was one of the best at the time, you know, being England, uh, to a nation that's probably 
the best, the best or one of the best at the moment, Russia. I think, you know, Russian hooligans, obviously, you've got to have respect for, you know, you've, you're very organised, you do things very well. You've obviously got a really good and active scene going on over there. Uh, the only thing I will say, though, is I don't think you have the level of policing that, that kind of we have and all the restrictions. So I'm not really trying to compare us both at the moment, but the, the police don't seem to be, you know, too willing to stop you fighting, you know, in the forests and stop you doing this. Maybe, maybe it's different. I don't know. You know, I've never been to Russia. I can't say. Uh, but yeah, I think we to compare the two scenes, our scene would be a lot more active if we didn't have all the police restrictions we got now. Taking that apart, though, uh, you have to give a lot of respect to the Russian scene as it goes. I personally really like the Russian style, fair fights. I know a lot of people, a lot of people might slate that as being not really football hooliganism, you know, because she's completely taken out of a football context. However, I really like it just because it's a very fair way to sort out who is the best and who's not the best. And to be honest, I'm going to ask the opinion in a minute of one of our older guys, but any of our older guys who do might slate the sort of Russian style, I think if you gave them the chance to have a 50 on 50 fight with Aston Villa away from any police or anywhere. I think every one of our lads would take you up on that offer. This is Zenit Musical versus Gladiators of Spartak. About 30 on 30, recent fight. I think a lot of lads, I mean, it really depends on your personal opinion about this sort of football violence, but I, I personally, uh, like this type of disorder as I think it's a very fair uh, way you know to see who's who's best you know out of the lads you know and um, a lot, however a lot of lads in England I think are quite against this type of violence as they think it's too far removed from football you know football hooliganism however it's becoming that hard nowadays to fight around the match and in the streets around the game in England I think this sort of violence would be a way of counteracting that. It's a lot easier to get away from the police and you know do this sort of violence on an unmatched day. У футбольного насилия на туманном Альбионе бурное прошлое и напряженное настоящее. Но есть ли будущее? What will happen in the future of the English scene? Uh, well, a lot of lads will have different answers to this, you know. I mean, you get lots of lads saying nowadays, oh, the scene's finished, oh, it's not as good as it used to be. However, uh, it still goes off, you know. Every week it'll go off somewhere in the English leagues, you know. Lads still turn out for big games and turn out, you know, not, not every week, but, you know, every time we play some decent opposition. So my prediction for the future is that it'll, it will always happen, you know. For, Football, you know, football clubs will always have firms following them. Lads will always, have, you know, want to get involved in football disorder. However, I do think it's becoming less connected with the actual football event. You know, it's becoming a lot harder to fight near to the stadium. And even on match days, I think my prediction for English football violence will be that it will continue to take place further and further away from the football stadium and further from town centres, you know. The locations where the fight's happening are becoming more obscure and, you know, further away. Uh, and to be honest, that's the way it has to be to avoid the police nowadays. You, you've got to be organised, you've got to take it offside, uh, and you, you, you've got to have it off away from the police. История футбольных войн в Англии насчитывает без малого век, но желающие не дать ей угаснуть находятся и по сей день. Что же влечет их в мир около футбола? Yeah, it's a it's a personal thing as to why people get involved in football violence, right? I mean, you could be a young lad growing up, right, being a Birmingham City or supporter or whoever you support, right? And then it just it's, it's a matter it's a matter it's a matter of pride really, pride in your club. Pride in your friends, like because you're Birmingham City, right? And you want to stand up for your friends, you stand up for your club, right? And I think if you've got the mentality, you like a bit of violence and stuff, that's what that's why you're going to get involved with it, which a lot of people do. But it's a personal thing, really, as to why people do get involved. Me personally, I got involved because I love the violence, I love to fight. Мы не могли не спросить наших героев об отношении к проекту Около футбола ТВ. Около футбол ТВ, I think is a, a great idea. You know, again, I think it will come down to your, uh, you know, individual lads' personal opinions on this. I know some lads will be very against the idea of any type of uh, information going out on the internet. You know, they, they, a lot of lads will think any 
information in the public domain, it will bring negative unwanted attention onto the firm. However, my opinion uh, is that it, it's a great idea, you know, it keeps the scene al alive, you know, in the, in the minds of its followers, you know. I think if you are a dedicated hooligan, you, you, you want to, you know, you want to find out what's been going on in, hooligan, in the hooligan world, you know, not just in your country, but in other, in other European countries, you want to know what firms are active, who's doing what, and you want to read and, uh, you know, about different fights that have been happening. So yeah, I, I'm all for it. I think it's a great idea, but again, it's, you know, personal opinion. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, um, Russian style is a lot different at the moment uh, to English football violence. Uh, what it is, I've been to Europe on a number of occasions over the years, and uh, I've got to know a lot of football hooligans in Europe and that. And um, I, I, I seem to think that football violence, they, when they recruit or when new people come in, they train, they, they go to train in the gyms and that, and they fight because it's like, we want to fight, we're hooligans, we'll train to fight. But over in England, it's not like that. Um, I think it's, over in England at the moment, um, the, the, the violence is still there, right? It still goes on quite a lot. Um, I don't really know much about the football violence over in Russia, only that they've got real good fighters. And I think obviously because of the policing, they don't have the proper policing over there to combat the violence mm -hmm. uh, like they do over here. Um, and I, I think if it was the same over here with the policing as it was in Russia, I think it'd be a hell of a lot worse. It'd be like a throwback to the 80s um, over here as well. But um, I respect them because they're fair fights. Um, uh, they don't use tools or nothing, um, you know, and once you're down, you're down. Over here, a lot of people use knives and, you know, other um, weapons and stuff to, to fight, uh, which I don't agree with uh, totally. But I do respect the Russians, uh, a lot of other European football uh, teams as well, firms, because, you know, their fighting um, is very good. Um, and hopefully, um, when we come to meet the Russians, we'll give them a good um, run for the money.